Hi, welcome to this episode of Millennial Pocket. Today we're going to be looking at the history of Dropbox. Dropbox is a file hosting service where users can store and share files, collaborate on projects and bring their best ideas to life. In 2020, Dropbox generated around $1.91 billion in revenue and the number of registered users reached worldwide 700 million. But how did it become one of the leaders in the cloud storage industry? Let's take a look. Drew Houston began working on ideas for startups when he was only a teenager. Before his junior year at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Houston took a year off to work with a former high school teacher on a test prep company. The company's goal was to help students get perfect scores on the SAT college admissions test. After graduating in computer science, Houston hoped to get his SAT prep company into the accelerator by Combinator, but was rejected. Two years later, during a bus trip between Boston and New York, Houston realized that he had forgotten his flash drive and couldn't do any of his work. So he started writing some code and made a basic file synchronization software, and the first version of Dropbox was born. Houston applied to Y Combinator again, this time with the idea for Dropbox, but he found another challenge. Paul Graham, the co-founder of Y Combinator, demanded that he find a co-founder for his company before he submitted his application. After talking around, he was connected to a friend of a friend, senior MIT student Arash Ferdowsi. After two hours of talking, he convinced Arash to drop out of college with only six months left until graduation to join him. In 2007, with a minimum viable product and a co-founder, Houston was accepted into the prestigious incubator and handed $15,000. Arash and Drew rented out an apartment, bought a Mac and got to work building the product. A few months later, they presented at a Y Combinator event and secured their first $1.2 million in seed funding from Sequoia Capital. The company publicly launched its service in 2008, a year after the company got its funding from Sequoia. Dropbox initially had a difficult time picking up new users, but by using some subtle niche marketing and a freemium model that could quickly generate money, they built momentum up fast. During the service's initial beta testing period, Houston created some demo videos where he showed off the ease of use and flexibility of his platform. Those videos went viral and helped attract a few hundred thousand users. In fact, overnight, the waitlist grew from 5,000 people to over 75,000. User numbers rocketed even further and faster when Houston and his team came up with an incentivized referral scheme. This offered existing Dropbox customers more free storage space if they could get a friend to sign up. With this referral marketing strategy, the company attracted millions of new customers and caught the attention of Steve Jobs, who made an offer for the business in 2011, but upon rejection proceeded to launch iCloud as a competitor. At that time, Dropbox wasn't the only one in the cloud storage sector. Other large companies began entering into the industry as well, with hopes of capitalizing on the file synchronization craze that Dropbox had started. Google released Drive, Microsoft countered with OneDrive, and as mentioned, Apple launched iCloud. The market was extremely competitive, but Dropbox managed to build a product that was adopted by millions. Despite starting out with few employees, Dropbox scaled fast. Between the launch date in 2007 and 2011 when they achieved stability, they grew to 100 million worldwide users. Their think small, scale fast mentality from the lean startup methodology played a big role in their success. Additionally, during the first years of the company, the early users were able to provide feedback to the founders, who would take this feedback into consideration to fine tune the product further. It was this feedback together with the optimizations and new features that made the Dropbox service better. Also, Dropbox offered two gigabytes of storage space when it first launched. They made the platform free for users who didn't need to store a lot of things online at the time. Offering free space was such a simple strategy, but it helped build an audience of millions, which it could then market with its paid subscriptions. Finally, 
Dropbox made integration across devices and operating systems like Linux, Mac and Microsoft so easy that people got used to it and made the platform a part of their daily lives. In July 2012, Dropbox acquired Tap and Gage, a San Francisco startup that enabled advertisers and publishers to collaborate on tablet-optimized advertising. With the acquisition, Dropbox wanted to diversify its monetization schemes and offer larger free storage in exchange for users seeing advertisements. In December of the same year, Dropbox acquired two companies, Audio Galaxy, a startup that allowed users to store their music files and playlists in the cloud and then stream them to any device, and Snapjoy, an online photo library that pulled together photos from a user's phone and camera and services like Instagram, Twitter and others. In April 2014, after buying Hackpad, a document sharing startup, and shutting it down three years later, Dropbox released Dropbox Paper, a business-focused collaboration tool. Paper provided its users with a platform that let them create, organize, and review content in a collaborative manner by assigning tasks to every individual in a team. On March 23, 2018, Dropbox went public, and on its first trading day, the stock opened at $29 per share, 38% above its IPO price, meaning Dropbox's valuation on IPO day was $9.2 billion. In January 2019, Dropbox acquired electronic signature startup HelloSign for $230 million in cash, its largest purchase ever at that time. The move put Dropbox in competition with Adobe and DocuSign and added functionality which attracted more big businesses to the company's core file sharing and collaboration products. By the end of 2019, the company announced the launch of Dropbox Spaces, which is a smart collaborative workspace built with machine intelligence that lets users focus on important tasks at work and help them stay in sync with their teams. Spaces focuses on reorganizing and bringing all the cloud content and local files together in one place, so that teams can access everything from one central location. In October 2020, Dropbox announced it would become a virtual first company and make remote work the primary day-to-day -day default for its employees. The company planned to facilitate in-person collaboration with existing real estate or other flexible spaces called Dropbox Studios, which allow some employees the flexibility to relocate to locations where it doesn't have offices. Dropbox reported having 15.48 million paying users. This was over 1 million more than in the previous year, and almost 9 million more compared to the beginning of the given period in 2015. Dropbox is a top cloud storage provider, but investors still seem concerned about the looming competition. The company controls almost 21% of the cloud storage market, putting it in second place behind Google Drive 34% and ahead of OneDrive 12%. What do you think about Dropbox? Do you use its service? What should they do to be more competitive? Would you invest in it? Please let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like if you got some value from this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Feel free to follow us on Instagram. We post every day there. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time.